millennial means to constantly hear how lazy, narcissistic, and how entitled our generation is. And the sad truth is that we agree. Born in the late 1980s, 1990s, and perhaps even the early 2000s, my generation, or millennials as most call it, grew up in the advent of smartphones and the rushing sprints for its infinite technological growth. We grew up protected and bubbled, entertained by 24-hour TV networks and aided by the understanding that the answer to everything lies in our pockets. But that very technological growth in our society has painted a very harsh image on us. We are called Generation Me, lazy, selfish, and shallow narcissists. And I guess it does make sense. We flood our phones to maximum storage with pictures of our own face, our cute dogs, whereas 50 years ago, people would have hung family portraits on the walls. We chuck our steps, our calories lost, we check the number of likes on social media daily, and not even that, some people even buy followers and likes for their social accounts. But perhaps most significantly of all, we spend more time than any other generation in front of the mirror. But of course we do. We grew up with Google and smartphones with computing power greater than what entire computers had just a few years ago. With that, we have the lucky convenience of having all the information we need at our fingertips. We don't have to go to the library to sift through thousands of dusty books because the library travels with us. We can find the answers we want with just a few clicks. And in fact, if I completely ignore the power of Google for this very TED Talk, I would probably be more dumb than smart. So my generation, in other words, has been far too exposed to instant gratification. With technology, if I have a question, I can go online and find the, find the answers immediately. Is my acne normal? How do I do well on the SAT? What should I do to get a girl to like me? I can do all of that and get my answers right away. Not only that, I get awards for pretty much doing anything, whether it be community service or participating in some club. Even my watch tells me, great job for walking around campus. <laughs> Instant gratification is an addiction we can no longer escape. And it's an addiction because it feels good. It feels good to receive compliments. It feels good to receive likes and comments on social media. That's why we go on our phones over and over and over again. Instant gratification is an addiction we can no longer escape. And it's just not healthy. Now, I'm a teenager, so I have an Instagram. And a few years ago, I started a photography account to showcase my passion to others. I was receiving thousands of likes in a week, with my follower base doubling day after day after day. Instant gratification. I post a picture, I get the response, I get the likes, I get the comments, I get the followers. But as schoolwork started to pile up, I posted less frequently, maybe a few times a month. And as a result, the likes and comments of followers also slowed down as well. And as a result, I quit. I quit my successful account that I had initially set up to showcase my passion to others solely for the fact that I was getting a slower response. Instant gratification made me pursue photography for the wrong reasons. My Instagram account was supposed to be a simple portfolio of what I love to do, but instead it turned into a medium of some praise. And another example, I run cross country. I've been running cross country for five years now. And the first year I tried the sport, I was horrible. I was so slow. But I still got some medals. My first year, I ran in the annual Mount Sac Cross Country Invitational, easily one of the biggest cross country events in the world. And I don't remember the specific details, but I'm pretty sure it was an even miracle to finish the race. But I still got this special achievement medal. It's a gratification. I do something and I instantly receive my prize regardless of performance. 
Fast forward to this year, I'm still not the best. But I've upgraded myself to high school cross country, where I don't get medals for losing anymore. And it's spinning. I've been used to winning despite losing. And, when, and now, when confronted with a hard loss, no prize given, well, it's hard. And so sure, we're naive. I'm naive. But what most do not realize when they call millennials narcissistic and entitled is that behind our outer image is that we are extremely sensitive and extremely fragile. And that very fragility comes from our addiction to instant gratification. Well, just look at us. We can't even wait a few seconds for a page to load online. But those extra seconds, they're nothing. When the Wi-Fi is down and we absolutely cannot get what we want, when we want it, all hell breaks loose. My generation is so addicted to instant <laughs> gratification. And when we are confronted with hard reality, life suddenly becomes too We've grown up protected that we can do what we want, be who we want to, and get what we want when we want it, if we believe enough. But bad news, it's not that easy. And that bad news isn't so easy for us to realize either, because we grew up in a different time period than our parents and grandparents. Take the workplace, for example. While we're the most educated generation, as 27% have a bachelor's degree or higher. In fact, our median annual earnings are about $2,000 less than our counterparts in 1980. So to be honest, millennials value lifestyles that incorporate work with our passions, our activities, our hobbies. Work is no longer everything for us. We adopt a work to live, not live to work mentality. We want to make an impact and do work that gives us a sense of achievement. But then again, we also want free food, comfortable chairs, and ping pong tables. But it all ties down to this idea, to instant gratification. We choose the work that gives us that gratification. That's why we want to make an impact. Because when we do, we get that sense of achievement we've been chasing our whole lives. But the issue the biggest issue is that instant gratification is now all we pursue. We want more of this magic dopamine-releasing madness. So we sleep with our phones next to our beds. We sit in classes, in meetings, with our phones on the table, not tucked away, because we're awaiting another text, or another like, another notification. That's also why millennials, 40% of millennials today, believe they should be promoted, regardless of performance, every two years. We've grown up not having to wait for anything. And from our addiction to prizes and likes, there's another problem, other than the fact that we're so annoying. We have started to blur who we really are in order to fit the image of someone else. You see, to get more instant gratification from our daily lives, we try to change who we fundamentally are. To get more praise, and to get more response. We think that we are not up to par as our classmates and friends. We think that we're not smart enough, not athletic enough, not able enough to pursue what we really want to do. And in the end, we end up pursuing someone else's dream. Because his dream gets in more likes and more popularity. We end up pursuing someone else's dream because she gets more prizes, more great jobs, more compliments. It's astonishing to see how quickly we adopt this foreign dream as our own. We all recognize that hard work and patience are important values, but we end up choosing what feels good and what's easiest in the moment. And many times, copying someone else is easier than it is to develop our own character and personality. So the narcissist image of millennials, therefore, is one of great irony. People call us entitled narcissists because they think we're obsessed with ourselves. 
That's not true. We're, oftentimes, we think the opposite. We don't like who we are. We're obsessed with changing ourselves and putting on a false facade for more likes and more attention. And that's not right. That's what we all need to realize. It's time to take a quick break. It's time to slow down and think about the long term. One of the most valuable lessons I've ever learned is to delay my immediate responses. In, order, in other words, stop and think before launching into action. Think if an hour of social media will get you more friends than an hour of real conversation. And it doesn't stop there. And we also realize that we don't need to fulfill this addiction to instant gratification by being someone we're not to impress others, we can find greater happiness and greater fulfillment. Developing character will take a really, really long time. But in the long term, we'll truly be ourselves. After all, if we spend time trying to be someone else, what will we ourselves be worth? Therefore, the greatest happiness and greatest success lies in pursuing who we are. To be honest, we can overcome, to, to an extent, our addiction to instant gratification just by taking a break to see the big picture. See the long term, not just the short term. And for me at least, when I keep my phone away at the dinner table, at school, on dates, I consciously remind myself that there is a greater meaning in pursuing real relationships that take much longer to develop than a swipe right or a double tap. Sure, I won't get the instant response that I would have gotten online, but in the long term, in the long term, this is worth it. Thank you very much.